Aloha and welcome to Restaurants Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. Twice a month, we discuss important and timely topics centered around Hawaii's food service industry. Hurricane season is in full force right now, and it doesn't end till November 30th. As of June 8th, 2022, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, predicts two to five tropical storms in the Central Pacific hurricane season this year. So people get ready because we are going to be seeing some tropical storms. Emergencies and disasters could halt your business. And every day a restaurant or a business is closed, we're losing large sums of money. Loss of sales because you were closed due to the, and plus the repair costs all add up. So today we're discussing why being partnered ahead of time and being prepared for all emergencies and having a plan is so critical. Knowing who to call can certainly get you back up and quickly and safely back into operation. So today I have two ladies with me from First On Sight. First, I would like to have Cheryl, can you please introduce yourself? Tell them a little bit about yourself and how you assist your clients through natural, through disasters. Well, thank you very much, Cheryl, for having us on board. So my name is Cheryl Ferrito uh, with First On Site, and I am a regional account manager. So my clients uh, specifically are restaurants, retailers, which is a perfect group for the association. Um, our services, uh, help with emergencies. And we're going to talk today about why it's important to have that plan and partnership in place prior. Uh, a lot of restaurants, I myself was in the restaurant industry for about 10 to 12 years. So being a restaurant manager and knowing the days and the daily ins and outs and, and what pops up every day uh, certainly is um, something that I, I know something about. So. Thank you, Cheryl. And Rachel, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about how you help your um, customers get through disasters. I am Rachel Lee. I am a regional account manager, um, just like Cheryl. I uh, take care of my clients um, in the parts of the unexpected happening, whether it's disasters or random events that happen. Um, I am kind of the front facing to our clients um, and kind of the liaison between the rest of our team um, to them as well. Thank you, Rachel. Welcome, ladies. So today we're talking about why during this season more so there's an emphasis on having a plan. In every business, there is an operation manual. In that manual, should a natural disaster or any disaster happen, whether it's flooding, whether it's a fire, whatever it is, even COVID, you know, a, a employee tests positive and that employee was at work all day yesterday. You know, how do you handle all these different scenarios? So why do we need to put into our business operation manual who to call in case there is a flood, a fire, or a positive COVID case from one of your employees? You should really think about that ahead of time versus it's happening and yes. now we're opening up the yellow pages, trying to, well, people don't do that anymore. They Google. I'm just <laughs> old. Google it and say, who can I call? So Cheryl, share with us, you know, some of the things that you do pre, um, pre-disaster as a, I guess. A, sure. Thank you. Well, first, first, we're going to talk about um, hurricane preparedness for either restaurant or retail. It's ex extremely important to have a um, yes, a standard operating procedure for emergencies, um, and it could be anything from heavy winds um, that push against your windows and windows shatter, or rains, heavy rains where the the rains can come in and flood underneath the doorways, or uh, your a pipe bursts, um, a fire happens on your stove, um, the toilet overflows. So being in the restaurant, you know it happens. It's gonna happen. It's not a. It's not if it happens. It's when it's gonna happen. So knowing. And your staff knowing who to call as well. So all of your managers, shift managers, all the way down to your servers um, and your cooks, uh, one should make the manager on duty aware of it, of course. But having that, um, you know, that magnet there saying, "Oh, this is who I call uh, when there's an emergency." Um, that's really important. It saves time and it saves you money in the long run because if you, the sooner you can address your flood 
the sooner you can reduce the water damage, not only on your flooring, but also on your drywall, your walls. Uh, if it's coming from the ceiling, if, for example, if it's a, a broken sprinkler head or you have a broken uh, HVAC pipe that comes, it may not necessarily be your establishment. It could be your neighbor upstairs if you're in a, a, a multi-level uh, establishment where they have the issue and then now it's, it becomes your problem. Uh, so knowing who to call right away to get the, to mitigate that um, initial extraction of the water is important because the longer you let that water sit, the higher it's going to go up on your drywall. And the higher it goes on your drywall, the harder it is going to be to dry. So, and if you don't dry it thoroughly and the right way, you can't just mop it up. That's not going to solve your problem. Then mold sets in. If you let the mold grow, then you're going to end up having to cut that out of the wall. Then you have to do reconstruction. So it's just, it's a rippling effect, literally water reference, rippling effect if you don't take care of it right away. So having that partnership with a restoration company is extremely important to one, get it done immediately. Um, what we initially do is um, once you invite us into your home, <laughs> which is your store, because we all know as managers, we live there. Um, we, we go and we assess and we look for things like where's your water shut off? Where's your gas shut off? Where's your electric shut off? That's also important that your staff know, knows where that's at. Uh, orientation um, and training is really important so that if something does burst, they know immediately where to go and shut off the water uh, safely. Make sure that's the priority to make sure they do it safely. Uh, so we go in, we figure out in case we do have to respond, we know where do we park our vehicles? You know, how long can we stay there? Um, also during uh, in a, a natural disaster, if it comes to a point, um, so when we initially shut down for COVID, only certain people can be on the road, right? We had to have letters saying, yes, we work at a restaurant. We're going to go to, you know, we're still working. Um, it's also important to have that for us as first on site with your letterhead say first on site is our restoration partner and they're going to we give them permission and access to come to our property to take care of XYZ and we can help each restaurant or each owner um, go ahead and write that letter out. It just it's just letting the authorities know that that we've been given permission prior to help you. Um, so all the other necessary things for a hurricane preparedness, of course, is you know, first aid station, fire extinguishers, um, uh, protective um, uh, PPE, the gloves, the eye protection. Um, also, if you haven't already done so, take pictures of all of your equipment, all of your, your um, furnitures and your furnishings, anything that can be damaged uh, when it's in its pristine ideal condition. That way when a disaster does happen, you can take the after pictures of hey, this is the damage that was done, right? That's for insurance purposes and keep it um, locked up in a way where, um, well, it has to be accessible, but off the ground. So if your filing cabinets are on the ground, it's very important that you have them um, either on like cinder blocks or some sort of platform that's above the, the ground level. So what if the water does come up, it doesn't damage your paperwork. Um, so as far as like how we respond to a natural disaster, which is because everyone is going to be calling us, all of our clients are going to be calling us, right? So we do have a master service agreement that we do with, um, you know, with our larger, um, with our larger clients and, you know, even the smaller ones where if uh, we have the resources, national resources that uh, we watch, we watch and monitor storms. So we kind of know what to expect and our teams that are in the mainland will get ready and gear up. They're called go guys. So they will go They'll get on a plane with the equipment and the manpower. They'll come here and they will help us out here in Hawaii. Um, that's what First Science Site is all about. They, they respond to natural disasters all over the country. And um, so if you are on our, our master service agreement list and you call, they know that you are a priority and they will, they will get to you um, quicker than if you were just you know a one-off here or one off there. So it's the relationship and partnership that we wanna establish with you folks. You know, we want to see you more than one time. It doesn't even have to be for a disaster, but even going in and inspecting mold, you know, if you have, especially in your walk-ins or along the walls, the, in the dish rooms where there's always water or moisture present, it's important that um, you see any type of mold to get that removed. And it could just be a simple wipe down, or if it's um, really damaged where the drywall is damaged because of that 
constant water contact, especially in the dish rooms. That's where we find them um, and the restrooms as well. Uh, it's important to address that and get that taken care of before, before it becomes a very large project, an expensive project. So it's all about prevention. It's all about maintenance and taking care of things. Um, and then kind of running along into that, um, what else? How else can you save money um, during to prepare for emergencies is getting your for the restaurants your hoods cleaned right you want to make sure that you have a, a routine hood cleaning. Um, and you also want to make sure that you, your oil rags are taken care of and disposed of properly in the proper placements um, so that they don't spark up and start fires. There have been a couple of incidences where the, the establishment itself says everything is supposed to do for prevention but it's the outside entities that come in and cause the leaking or the, the water damage or the fires. For example, recently there was a flood um, in all the water shopping center. And it was because there was a homeless gentleman that broke into the utility room and literally ripped out the HVAC piping. So it flooded a restaurant, it flooded um, the Department of um, Motor Vehicles, and it also uh, flooded the corridor for the shopping center. So there was multiple people affected by an outside entity that's considered an emergency. So that, that restaurant manager, he had no idea who to call. Fortunately, I was responding to the DMV next door and I said, hey, are you okay? And he's like, I don't think so. <laughs> so I went in there, my team, we assessed it and we helped him out. So what happens is, you know, we go in there and we extract the water and we also sanitize and clean it so that you know it's clean but the next step and and install dehumidifiers to make sure that everything is dried out um he wanted to like open that day the reality of it was it probably it was sitting there for the water was sitting there for a while and the reality is he most likely has to cut some of the walls out and 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 properly take care of that problem so he doesn't get mold especially in the restaurant industry, uh, you know, health concerns, yes. Um, so that's one incident about flooding. The, another one was a fire, um, which happened in Kapahulu, and there was an outside um, shopping cart of a homeless person that caught on fire, and that fire ended up going into the establishment. So, you know, it's not, it's not a matter, again, of if it's gonna happen, it's when it's gonna happen. You know, we wanna try and avoid and prevent and prepare as much as possible, but having a good plan in place is the key to saving money, saving time. The sooner you get it fixed, the sooner you address your problems, the sooner you can reopen, not only for your revenue, but for your employees, right? You wanna make sure that your employees are working. So along the lines with hurricane preparedness, establishing and, and assessing how quickly can I reopen if you know the heavy rains flood my unit or flood my store after first on site is all done? Well, you have to make sure that your employees and their families are safe, right? You need, you need workers. <laughs> so you have to make sure that they're able to come in as well. So not only is it, you know, um, it's the human aspect that you have to consider uh, as, a, as a whole. So I know today we could talk totally about like, hey, what first on site services we have, but we also, as a restaurant manager, previous restaurant manager, there's a lot of different elements that go into, hey, can we open, right? Um, safety is, is the first priority, um, making sure it's safe for your customers to come back in. You know, there's nothing um, dangling or damaged that they can step on or slide into. Uh, that's very important, but also the safety and um, health of your employees as well. So we also do provide COVID decontamination. So yes, if you do have an employee that comes in, uh, is tested positive, it's a chain reaction. It's, you know, most likely the rest of the staff has some sort of contact with that. So we do provide COVID uh, de decontamination services as well. So, you know, our website has everything on there, but it's just things that you normally wouldn't consider happening um, that could happen. You know, fire, you have, the fire department comes in, they give us the all clear. It's the, well, what do we do with all the water that they just shot into my, my restaurant? How do we get that cleaned up? Well, you call first on site. And once we get the okay for the fire department, we'll go and extract the water. And then we do assessment and you know clean it all up. We put our air scrubbers in there to clean the air out so you don't have that smoke smell. Um, and then even your toilets, call a plumber for the actual toilet. But as far as cleaning it up, that's the category three. 
No one likes to deal with that. Nobody, but we will. <laughs> we'll, we'll take care of it for you. No problem. Just give us a call. Um, yeah. And then also, um, yeah. And the smell of that too. So the, the sanitation of it, um, you know, again, broken sprinkler heads, you know, infrastructure on a lot of our restaurants is, is quite old and um, sprinklers, the infrastructure does sometimes rust out and all of a sudden we'll just start bursting for no reason at all. Um, so that's when you would give, again, find out where that water shutoff is and then call us for uh, extraction. Um, and then asbestos, so, you know, we do asbestos abatement and a lot of times you won't find it unless there is a previous problem happening. Say for example, you know, your sprinklers don't go off or you get a leak from the roof and you have to remove your ceiling tiles. Well, once you remove your ceiling tiles, that's when you get into the dirt and you're like, oh my gosh, I did not know that was there. And a lot of times the asbestos is in the, um, the installation that's around the piping that could be affected. Or if you're having to, um, you know, cut into walls, the asbestos is in the mud or the spackle that's in there. So we do have third party testers that go in and um, our environmentalists that go in and test everything to make sure that our workers are safe. And of course, um, that, that you guys are safe as well. Because we, if you're gonna fix it, fix it right. And that way you don't have a, a future problem with that. So that's where the asbestos abatement comes in. But we also do um, lead remediation. So if you have an old building and you notice that the paint is uh, flaking off, we can take care of the smaller flaking areas, um, test that to make sure, you know, if it is safe or not, or if it has lead in it, and then we can take care of that problem as well. Um, I know I've gone and on. <laughs> do you have any other questions for me, Cheryl? Well, gonna, well I was going to have Rachel kind of cover yes. other services. You know, Rachel, one of the, I think it's more apparent that the important, importance of keeping our establishments, especially restaurants clean post COVID, you know, during COVID, everybody's super sensitive to, you know, six foot distancing and wearing masks. Now I think our customers and our patrons are more sensitive. So we talked about mold. And if a customer does see mold, let's say it's in the bathroom, or let's say it's in the hall leading to the bathroom. I feel that our patrons and customers are more sensitive to those things. So they may not say something to the restaurateur or the general manager but they'll definitely probably not come back and they probably will tell all their friends and family so what would you say to something like that where you know a restaurant does have um, signs of mold or signs of things that maybe is not the the best um, presentation for our public yeah I, mean I am definitely yeah, I, I'm definitely a preacher of see something, do something, see something, say something. Um, so my thing was, even if it is you're open and you do visually see it, maybe employee, general manager, manager, or whatnot, or shift manager, you see something, you do something, you say something, and of course, plan of attack, right? So you want to kind of go to the management team if you're an employee and mention, you know, the concern there. Um, some people are highly sensitive. Um, where others are not sensitive to seeing visual mode. Um, but then again, you want to cite on the area of caution and of course bring that up to the management and have that addressed. And in that matter of fact, then we would definitely um, be called out and we would come out and do a site assessment. And um, mode is kind of one of those things where it can be a can of worms. So if you do inspect it and you see it and, you know, we mitigate it, um, sometimes the mitigation might not just be a you know, a foot by two foot cutout. It might be something that spans out a little bit further. So it's kind of being educated and cognizant of the job might span a little bit further than just that square footage or area um, in the bathroom, if that's where it has been seen. And then also if there's mold, um, then obviously there's a sign of a leak somewhere um, and something that may not have been um, addressed. So it might be a matter of investigating. So opening it up and seeing exactly where the source is coming from. Um, you know, it may be some condensating from pipeline. It might be a sprinkler leak. It might be um, chill water line, you know, of, of um, the building. So it just depends where, you know, that leak might occur from. But if there's mold, it's been occurring for a duration and a period of time. And that's kind of what mold feeds off of, um, just kind of that 
dryness of the drywall and dry material with dust and skin particles and cells and water. That's all it needs. So if you can't, if you don't address it, then if you don't address it, the water leak, then of course it's going to be mold for sure. But see something, do something, say something. Very good. I like that a lot. So let's see, um, Rachel, is there anything that Cheryl missed that we want to touch on? Uh, we've got like another, what, eight minutes. And I just want to be sure, Rachel, you've, you know, been able to share all of the services um, that First On Site pr provides. Yeah, so um, Cheryl pretty much um, touched up on the full spectrum. So a lot of what we've been doing, of course, because we live in Hawaii and we actually haven't had any hurricanes um, or anything disastrous recently to that magnitude. Um, a lot of it is, you know, meeting with our clients and preaching and, and kind of reminding them that um, preparation, preparedness ahead of time is important. Um, having a plan, you know, within your own household and within your own work family um, is important. And for our sake in our internal company, um, because we are preparing or we work with people and properties, um, we also have an uh, internal family plan within our organization that we follow. So it's definitely kind of, you know, preaching that and kind of explaining and letting the different um, client base know that this is what we do. This is what you should be doing um, and covering basis as well. Um, but the full spectrum, I mean, the, the bread and butter of the work, so the restoration side, the water damage, the flooding, the fires, the smoke and mold and all that, that's kind of pretty much um, the, the, the wheelhouse. Um, and in addition to that, with the COVID cleaning and the disinfectant cleaning, the biohazard and the trauma, I mean, that kind of comes along with the unexpectedness that comes at the different properties, um, you know, depending on whether they're retail or hospitality and healthcare or commercial properties. I mean, you kind of see it across the board. Um, and then of course it's sticking to industry standards as well. So not only our own internal in, you know, standards that we have as a company and what we represent, but it's also sticking to um, the integrity of what the industry standard is too. Yeah. I also wanted to add, Cheryl, um, thank you, uh, Rachel. I also wanted to add that um, we do have the capabilities to do the reconstruction of any kind of um, demo that, or if we have to remove an area, we have the capabilities, we have a construction team that is very good at their jobs. Um, so even if there's projects that the uh, restaurants are looking at doing or the retails are, are doing, that's kind of like the, the, the side jobs of our industry. So we have all the emergency services, but we are general contractors as well. So there are opportunities to, um, to do some renovation works um, for the retailers or the, uh, the restaurant services. Um, that's just something that's kind of on the side and to know that we do our own, we do our own work um, and we do call in subcontractors for larger jobs, but um, primarily first on site is that we want to be first on site to any of your situations or, or challenges. And we want to work as a partner, uh, not just as a contractor, not just as a vendor, but we do lunch and learns. We can, you know, sit in on a staff meeting and educate your staff on what does mold look like? You know, what does mold look like? Um, and, and how they, as employees um, and, and partners in the, in the business can help keep the business going, keep it healthy um, and those types of things, like take ownership of it. Like, it's not just the, I'm gonna clock in and work today, but no, this is because we all know in the restaurant industry, we are at the restaurant probably more than we see our families. <laughs> that is our family, that's our second family. Um, that's what I always loved about the restaurant business. Um, you know, you get through that rush and you're like, yeah, we did it. You know, everybody go home, be safe, come back tomorrow <laughs> you know, type of thing. So um, I'm just really fortunate and very um, uh, appreciative, um, Cheryl, to be with the Hawaii Restaurant Association. I'm glad my, my counterpart, Rachel, was able to join me today. Um, she is uh, the the queen of all. I follow her in her footsteps, <laughs> <laughs> but she um, she helps me out a lot. And uh, you, anyone can call us anytime and ask any questions. The, the most we can say is, yes, we can do that. Or you know what? We may not be able to do that, but here's somebody who can. So think of us as a partner. Think of us as a part of the family as well. Uh, and not just a vendor that's looking to make a buck. Because if you guys are in business, the, the, the better our economy is as a whole. And, um, you know, families are working, 
and families are getting fed. <laughs> families are going shopping. So very thankful for the economy um, of the restaurant, restaurant owners and retail owners. So thank you so much for the time today. Thank you, Cheryl. And Rachel, do you have any closing statements before I close our show? I just want to leave with one um, statement would be it's better to know us and not need us versus meet us and not know us. So again, for on site property restoration, um, we don't wish on any of the unexpected events, but we're certainly here if you need us. Thank, so thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you, you so much. And I want to thank First On Site for being a member of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. And today, again, we're talking about something very important, partnering up with other businesses such as First On Site, should that emergency, should that disaster, that unfortunate incident happen. You already have their name. You already know who they are and they're familiar with your location, your operation and um, your, your um, office structure or your restaurant structure. Again, Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice of Hawaii's restaurants and food service industry. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at info at hawaiirestaurant.org. Thank you, and we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.